I thought you were a good daughter-in-law, but it seems I was wrong. Leave this house and never come back. You're nothing but a parasite. Pack your things and go. Ever since my husband passed away, my mother-in-law Sarah and sister-in-law Catherine have been saying mean things to me. Even though I've been taking care of Sarah, my husband was worried about her until the end. And yet Catherine says bad things about him, and I couldn't help but argue back. If you both feel that way, I understand. I'll leave. When I said that Sarah and Catherine were happy, but a few months later, they were begging me, the bad luck I wished for them was worse than I thought. My name is Emily. I'm 32 years old and work as a buyer for famous brands. I met my husband Tom through a friend. Tom was kind and calm, just the husband I wanted, so I said yes when he proposed. Tom's parents were independent, so I got along well with them and didn't have any problems with my mother-in-law. Having a caring mother-in-law and practical father-in-law seemed perfect to me. Tom worried about his mom's financial future because she didn't think much about money. He thought it would be fine as long as his dad, who was responsible with money, was healthy. Tom also had an older sister, Catherine, who was divorced and lived alone. He figured she'd take care of their parents later on, but Tom didn't fully trust Catherine. I'm worried about giving our family money matters to Catherine. Why? There were problems before. I didn't think much about Catherine's past then, but later Tom's worries turned out to be true. After I married Tom and had a few peaceful years, his dad got sicker and died. Since Sarah always depended on her husband, she was devastated. It's tough now, Sarah, but let's try to move on. I've always let my husband handle everything. I don't know how to do it alone. Tom was worried about his mom living alone and I shared his concern. As our son, he must have been really stressed about it. Then one night he came to me with an idea. Emily, what if my mom comes to live with us? It was unexpected, but I had a feeling he might suggest this someday. But what about Catherine? What about her? Shouldn't she, as the daughter, take care of mom instead of us? I want to step up and take dad's place, looking after mom. She's not great with money, so I'll handle her finances too. Can't we ask Catherine to do that? No, that won't work. It was rare for Tom to firmly say no to my idea. I want to make sure dad's money is well taken care of so mom won't struggle later on. Even though he felt bad about asking me to live together, Tom was determined to handle dad's inheritance and savings. It's okay. I think we'll all be happy living together with your mom. I'm genuinely worried about her being alone too. Oh, Emily, thank you so much. And so we started our new life as a family of three in Sarah's house, just like she promised. Sarah left everything for her husband to handle, from bank accounts to bills and credit cards. She didn't really understand any of it. Tom managed her money separately from ours and decided to give her a monthly allowance for her expenses. Whenever Sarah was tempted by dodgy salespeople or pressured to buy expensive stuff by friends, it was Tom's job to guide her. If he didn't, she might end up with a lot of debt because she was careless with money. By taking on the role of her husband, Tom made his mom happy. Seeing her happier also made Tom feel better. Sarah helped out with the household chores since I was working, and everything was going smoothly. But our peaceful life came to an abrupt halt. Tom collapsed at work. He had the same illness as his dad might have pushed himself too hard during a busy time, ending up in the hospital. Sarah and I visited him almost every day, but Tom didn't seem to be getting better. Emily, I need to talk to you about what happens after I'm gone. Don't say that. Let's focus. I'm getting you better so we can go back to living with your mom just like before. I knew I might get sick like Dad, so I'm prepared. But there's one thing I need you to do for me regarding Mom. Trying to hold back tears, I listened closely to my husband's last request. A few weeks later, Tom passed away. Dealing with telling relatives, sorting things out with his job, and planning the funeral kept me busy and distracted from the grief. 
Once everything was settled, I remembered what Tom had asked of me. There was no time to mourn. Now I had to step into Tom's shoes and take care of my mother-in-law. I'm sorry I've been occupied lately, Sarah. From now on, I'll handle the money matters instead of Tom. Don't worry, I'll make sure we have enough for our monthly expenses. Emily, are you still going to stay with me now that Tom is gone? Absolutely, Tom always told me to take care of you. Let's keep supporting each other. I understand, Sarah's eyes filled with tears as she spoke. I'm sorry for putting the burden of finances on you while you're already busy. Don't worry, keeping busy helps me cope, so it's actually helpful. But Catherine didn't seem happy about me living with her mom. When she found out I was not only staying but also handling the money, she burst into the house in anger. Why is Emily, an outsider, still here after Tom's gone? And why is she in charge of the money? Doesn't that seem strange to you? Before Tom passed away, he asked me to take care of Sarah and handle the finances. Hem, are you just saying that conveniently? No, it's what Tom wanted. Is there some hidden reason behind this? And are you using Tom's name to your advantage? Catherine wasn't convinced, but she backed off for the time being. However, the next week she came back furious. Emily, what do you think you're doing? I saw everything. What are you talking about? You're having an affair, aren't you? I saw you going into a men's store and dining at a fancy restaurant with a man. Are you using Tom's money on your lover? That's not true. I haven't spent any money like that on someone else. Your excuse pieces won't cut it. It hasn't been long since Tom passed away and you're already moving on to someone new. Have you no shame? Mother, don't you agree? Influenced by Catherine's words, Sarah started to doubt me too. Emily, is it true? No, that's not what happened. I'm just following Tom's wishes. I tried to explain, but Catherine interrupted me. How dare you bring up Tom's name after cheating on him? How could you sink so low? I fell silent, feeling a cold stare from both Catherine and Sarah. Then Sarah spoke up. I used to think you were a good daughter-in-law, but I was wrong. I never want to see you again. Leave. Catherine chimed in triumphantly. That's right, Harrisites like you don't belong here. Determined not to let Tom's wishes go to waste, I endured it all. With that resolve, I remained silent, but Sarah and Catherine didn't stop there. They continued to hurl hurtful words at me. Poor Tom picking someone like you. He was always so easily fooled, you know. Maybe he tricked you into thinking he'd handle the money, but actually used Mom's money for himself. To tarnish Tom's memory, especially when he cared so much about his mom, is unforgivable to me. I could handle them saying bad things about me, but I can't stand them insulting my late husband. I'm sorry, Tom, for not keeping our promise. I silently apologized to him as I turned to Sarah and Catherine. I understand. I'll leave like you both want. Hearing my words, the two exchanged looks and grinned. Finally seeing reason, huh? Leave the bank book here when you go. Sure. I handed over the bank book containing Sarah's living expenses and her husband's inheritance, then left the house. But three months later, I got a call from Sarah, whom I had distanced myself from. Emily, they're saying I can't pay my car bill. Why? What's happening? Maybe you spent too much and don't have enough left. You should check your balance using your bank book. How will I do that? It seems Sarah hadn't changed. She was still careless about money even after I left. As I thought this, Sarah started yelling at me angrily. This never happened when you were here. Suddenly, after you left, the money's gone. You must have stolen it. I can't believe this. Come here right now. Furious, Sarah hung up the phone. Feeling heavy-hearted, I reluctantly went to her house. When I arrived, both Sarah and Catherine were waiting for me. Ignoring Sarah's anger, I accessed her online banking, checked the balance, and showed it to her. Here's the transaction history for this account. As you can see, while I was managing it, the balance never went negative. Do you understand? 
because I was saving money. It's hard to believe that you, who aren't good with money, would suddenly start saving. Actually, the balance stayed positive because I was depositing $1,500 every month for living expenses. Living expenses? I didn't know about that. Tom and I did it while he was alive. We decided to use our money to cover your expenses so your savings wouldn't go down. Really? Tom did that? Yes, even after he passed away, I kept doing it with $1,500 for my own salary. But when you asked me to leave, I stopped. Then I continued showing Sarah the transaction details. Let's see the transactions after I left. There are more than $1,500 being taken out, suggesting big expenses. I didn't change my spending habits. Maybe Catherine used it. With that, I shifted the conversation to Catherine. Looking at the details, there were car payments at fancy stores and restaurants. I can't picture Sarah spending money at those places. Catherine, do you have any clue? It wasn't me, but I can't think of anyone else who might have used it. But could it be you? Did you secretly use a family card or something? I see you at those shops and restaurants. Before, even now, you're still using mom's money. How low can you go? Can you just stop? I was there for work. The meals were for a meeting with a shop owner. Just because I say it's for work, you think you can't trust me. Fine, let's confirm it right now. I immediately called the shop owner. Thank you for always helping us out. Yes, it was last Friday and the item was, well, I was checking some details on the phone. Catherine just stared blankly. Thank you. Can you include that as well? After ending the call and checking my email, I showed Catherine and Sarah the attached photo. It showed Catherine shopping at the store. What's this? Catherine looked shocked as she saw the photo. It seems the security camera caught you, Catherine, buying these luxury items. When I spoke to the shop owner, they confirmed it right away. I'm pretty sure the person in this photo is you, don't you agree? Catherine was speechless. The shop owner also mentioned that items matching the ones you bought have been showing up at pawn shops lately. The dates and items match the ones when you use the card, right? Catherine's voice shook and she seemed confused. Sarah, looking puzzled, asked Catherine, but why go through all this trouble? Buying something and then selling it to a pawn shop right away. Since Catherine didn't seem willing to answer, I spoke up. She probably needed cash quickly. If she took it straight from the bank account, it would have been noticed right away. So you tried to frame me by shopping at my workplace making it look like I was the one spending money, didn't you? Catherine couldn't defend herself and stayed silent. Meanwhile, Sarah seemed to have more questions and kept pressing Catherine. Catherine, why do you need so much money? Well, I had debts to repay, Catherine confessed quietly. But I added more to her confession. You didn't tell Sarah about it, did you? Do you know why Catherine got divorced? It was because of her debts. Tom often mentioned how troubled he was because Catherine kept asking to borrow money. This has been going on since before Catherine got married. Even after she got married, Tom complained that Catherine's spending habits hadn't changed. You had debts. Sarah then remembered something. The money your father left you, Catherine. I gave you a bank book with the inheritance in it, didn't I? Don't tell me even that money. At Sarah's request... I checked the balance of the bank account where the inheritance was kept. Sarah, the bank account is completely empty. What? Completely empty? But a few days after I left the house, all the money was taken out of the account. No, this can't be. Sarah collapsed to her knees, yelling at Catherine in anger. What's the problem? I had to meet my repayment deadline. My father would have let me, his daughter, use the inheritance however I wanted. I can't believe it. Sarah is so stunned. It seems Tom was right all along. He always said letting Catherine handle money was risky. He probably saw this coming. Sarah gave Catherine a stern look. That money wasn't just for me, you know. You got your share of the inheritance, right? 
Who uses someone else's money? You're the one taking advantage of this house. Leave. We're done. Mom, wait. Didn't we agree that I would live here in Emily's place after she left? If I stay with someone like you, I'll end up in debt too. I expect you to return every cent of your father's inheritance. With those words, Sarah forcefully kicked Catherine out of the house. However, I'm unsure if it was the right outcome. Since then, we've lost all contact with Catherine, and Sarah never got back any of the misused inheritance. If she still had it, Sarah could have lived comfortably in her old age. But now, she lives in poverty and loneliness. On the other hand, even though Catherine used the inheritance to pay off her debts, her spending habits didn't change, and she's accumulated even more debt. Without money to repay her debts, she keeps moving to avoid her loan sharks. Only now do I truly feel the weight of Tom's passing. Though things turned out differently from Tom's last wish, I believe I haven't done anything wrong. Tom wanted me to prioritize my happiness above all else. Living with Sarah and Catherine would have gone against Tom's wishes for our well-being. I believe he would understand. From now on, with memories of Tom in my heart, I'll take a new step forward.